Hey friends, it's Jasmine and I hope you all are doing well. Today, what I wanted to talk about with you is blood magic. Now, this is a highly requested video and also a video that I've really wanted to make sure that I'm putting some serious thought into. Um, I, I even considered potentially not even making this video due to just the nature of what this conversation is going to be about. So if you are squeamish um, or don't particularly enjoy talking about bodily functions or fluid, if you are not interested in hearing my opinion about the use of blood and ceremonial rituals and magic, then this is likely not going to be the video for you. And I would suggest that you go watch a different video because that is what we are going to be talking about in this video. I'm also positive that this video will likely either get flagged or demonetized considering uh, just the nature of YouTube. So if that happens, um, it might just be linked behind my Patreon. I don't know, but if you could give this video a like, subscribe, it would definitely help your girl out. And let's just get right into the video. Blood magic. I think a lot of different things come to mind when we hear those words together, blood and magic. I think many people have very vis like vivid visuals about blood magic or possibly preconceived notions about blood magic and how I think pop culture and the media has portrayed blood magic in some ways is so incredibly inaccurate and in other ways I think very accurate. So I think that this topic is very interesting to be able to kind of dissect. And I also want to give a disclaimer here and say that everything I'm mentioning in this video is 100% my own personal opinions about blood magic um, and also in correspondence with our magical traditions and how we do blood magic um, ceremoniously. So I'm going to give one last final, I guess, warning here that if you are squeamish, I'm gonna suggest again that you click away from this video um, because we are going to be talking about blood. So blood magic can be something so incredibly powerful. And I think the best place to start when learning about blood magic or how to utilize blood magic in a safe way is to first kind of dissect what actually is blood, not necessarily from like a medical uh, standpoint, I'm saying more so from a witch's lens or a magical perspective. I think like many things in the craft, everything has a correspondence, everything has properties to it, uh, be it mundane or magical. Blood is no different. Blood has magical properties and correspondence that we can first look at to determine how blood can best be used in our craft. So in talking about what blood actually does and what are blood's actual properties, looking at this first, and like I said, from a magical perspective, we know that blood will carry oxygen. In that sense, you could very much think of blood being very much a life giver and a vessel for life. We also know that blood clots. So in that sense, blood can be incredibly protective and also further life sustaining as it prevents from bleeding out. Hypothetically, depending, right? And obviously everyone's medical um, stuff might vary here, right? We all have different bodies, but in a general sense, this is blood. So we know that it carries oxygen, we know that blood clots, and we also know that blood carries antibodies that fights infections. So if we think about that, what sort of magical correspondence could we pull from this, this source? So what I would pull from this is that blood is life-sustaining, blood is a life giver, blood carries chi, prana, life within it. Blood also can link us very much to our ancestry and our ancestors. So it has that sort of connotation in it as well. 
The antibodies in blood that fight off infection and also due to the way blood clots, blood is also incredibly a protective magical resource that is extremely potent because it literally comes from your life energy. It comes from your chi, your prana, your soul. Now, I do want to preface in this video as well that I am going to be specifically talking about the blood from our heart. I am not going to be talking about other sources of blood, though there are many other sources that you can also utilize. And I will touch on that briefly, but most of this video is actually going to be about um, blood from our veins, blood from our heart. So other types of blood might be like menstrual blood, which is also incredibly sacred and potent and, um, you know, perfectly all well and good to use in various different spells or rituals. And I do think that menstrual blood specifically does carry a lot of these same properties that heart blood uh, would carry. And when I'm saying heart blood, I'm speaking from, you know, the blood that comes from our veins, um, in the sense through mutilation. There's really not a better way to put that. Um, however, there is also the use of animal blood as well and animal sacrifices. Um, like I said, I'm specifically just going to be talking about heart blood. So with the blood from our heart, we have these correspondences. And this is something that pretty much all of us are going to have readily available access to using this resource anytime we might need to. And with talking about what blood's properties are, as we just have, we also should kind of ponder how we could best use heart blood in ceremonial magic or rituals or just the craft in general. And a couple of ways that I personally use blood in the craft, number one would be blood divination. Blood divination is a divination system that uses purely your own blood. What you do essentially is you extract your heart blood and you read it as a form of scrying, divination, um, gazing into the blood. I'm not going to go into great depth about blood divination because I'm not totally sure um, where boundaries are with how explicit I can get, at least here on YouTube. Um, so that might be more of a Patreon thing. Um, but if you're interested, comment down below and let me know if you would like to get more information about blood divination. Aspect that heart blood can be used in is offerings or feedings. So feeding something blood or offering your blood. Now, sure, I'm, I'm positive that, you know, many of you have heard lots of precautionary measures about working with blood. So we will touch on that, but I'm first just talking about different ways that I personally use blood, uh, heart blood. So offerings or feedings, feeding something to a spirit, feeding an egregore, feeding a servitor, feeding maybe a poppet. Um, those are some different ways that you can feed blood. And obviously you're going to be extracting heart blood and you're going to be giving it to a um, entity of that would be you are giving part of your soul, um, giving part of your life essence to protect or fuel something else, right? Because we talked about earlier how blood is life sustaining and protecting. So let's get into a little bit of some precautions here before we get too much further into this video. Oh, I think it would be incredibly irresponsible of me to not touch on some precautions. And I'm sure many of you are likely to already be familiar with practicing uh, safe blood work, I guess we'll call it. But in case you're not, you do want to be careful. You do want to make sure that you are being sanitary and safe. Um, of course, blood can also carry pathogens, viruses, things like that. So you want to make sure that you're being as safe and sterile as possible, but also being as ethical as possible. And that's, I think, where the line gets blurred a bit because we all have our own ethics. So I want to stress that when you're researching stuff about blood magic, you are going to see a lot of dogmatic 
um, vernacular, I guess, used. And you are going to see a lot of preaching and judging and um, a lot of very intense opinions about blood magic. In this video, I'm going to try to keep those of mine to the wayside because I just want to present the information to you in an educational way for you to do what you feel is right for you with blood magic. Talking about some precautions with using heart blood, um, number one, where are you going to be extracting this from? Like, as in physically, where are you going to be when you are harvesting this heart blood? And secondly, where on your body um, are you going to be when harvesting heart blood? or theoretically on someone else's body if that is the situation. So some things to think about would number one be you want to make sure that the area is incredibly clean. You want to make sure it's clean and dry. You also want to make sure that the tool or the implement that you're using is as sterile and clean as possible and also very, very, very sharp. You do not want to use something dull you want to use something nice and sharp. So I'm sure you guys have seen, especially in pop culture, you know, the witches who like take a knife and slit their hand open and there's blood ever. You don't have to do all that. There's also a scene like in the craft where they are passing a chalice of red wine around, right? And they have, and they take the blood and put it in the, I think that there's also a scene from there where they put that their blood in a chalice. And I just think that that's a little over dramatic and a little comical, very aesthetic, but a little over the top, I would say. So make sure that your implement and your tool is clean and sterile and nice and nice and sharp, right? We want to have a nice clean opening. We don't want to use something dull and, and, uh, and rough because that's not really going to create a nice clean cut that's going to create more of like a tear and that's going to be harder to heal. And we want to make sure that everything heals up. We want to make sure that we're getting the blood easily and safely. And we want to make sure that the opening where we are receiving the blood from is also going to heal up nicely. And uh, potentially, if you prefer, with as little as scarring as, as possible. You also definitely want to make sure that you're being incredibly careful if you are going to be ingesting any sort of blood, um, specifically like blood that is not your own. I am not going to be really touching on that much. I just want to make sure that, you know, you want to make sure you know everything that could theoretically be in um, blood that is not yours that you might be consuming. So I would recommend maybe getting some blood work done and kind of getting that looked at. I'm not necessarily advocating um, for that. But I'm not necessarily shunning it either. Okay. Caution about using heart blood is you want to make sure that you're being careful about how you use it. And this is equally, I think, preached about um, when it comes to blood magic as the, as the cautions around being safe and clean and sterile are because blood is so linked to our, our life essence. And it's literally a part of our, our spirit, our chi, our prana, our soul. It links us to our ancestral line. It's very, very powerful. Um, it's connecting us with our primal instincts and our animalistic nature as well. Even just the mere sight of blood can cause people to have a wide array of primal reactions between, you know, fight and flight, or even potentially passing out from the sight of blood due to what blood means to us in our subconscious mind. I would personally be extremely careful about offering your blood to anyone or anything without thorough research. You definitely want to make sure that if you are offering your blood to any sort of astral being that you know for sure what this astral being is, because there are trickster spirits, and you also know why you are giving this blood. When you are making a, an offering of your blood, you are offering a part of your soul to whatever you are offering it to. You are bleeding as an offering 
with heart blood, you are giving a part of your spirit. You are giving a part of your soul. And maybe you are doing that to feed said spirit, protect said spirit, empower said spirit, give it strength and give it life because that is what blood does. It is protective. It is cleansing. It is healing. And it is life sustaining. So a lot of times blood will, would be most popularized in the craft in very dire circumstances of trying to protect yourself or a loved one from potential physical danger, spiritual danger, offering your blood. You are offering a part of your soul. So that is why you just want to be careful with why and to who you are offering this blood to. I think that this occult philosophy is also why some religions will not accept blood transfusions. Think about that. Blood carries with it the spirit of where it has come from. If I were to give you some of my blood, I am giving you a part of my soul. I am giving you fundamentally part of my spirit and my power as well. It's been a big belief throughout cultures that partake in um, taking the heart blood from another living mortal human that they are going to be accessing its power or its abilities or its strengths. And that belief, in my opinion, within the occult, is true as well. Blood is also commonly used in spell work, and spells that blood would be used in would be used similarly to its properties. So once again, those properties are life-sustaining, cleansing, healing, protection. So that is typically where blood is used in. And I see a lot of mess, a lot of mess online and a lot of back and forth amongst witches of what one witch should do, shouldn't do, could do, would do, whatever, when it comes to love spells and blood. I personally believe that, like I've said, when you are giving some of your blood to someone, you are giving a little bit of your spirit, your soul, your power to them. Now you could use the intention as it to be an offering to them, or you could use it as an intention as a way to put a piece of your spirit inside them in order to manipulate them. Um, that is just kind of a tea. Blood can be very left hand or right hand or ambidextrous depending upon your intention. Blood would also be heavily associated with two elements simultaneously or one at a time depending on who you ask in the craft. Blood is often heavily associated with the element of water um, or the heart blood, the heart being very aquatic, very emotional. Um, and blood is also heavily associated with fire and our spirit and our soul and our passions. I personally believe that both of these elements are heavily associated with blood. I don't think that while blood is a liquid, I don't think that its only elemental correspondence would be water. I think that we could also associate the spiritual, fiery, gusto, sexual, sensual, creative aspects of fire to blood as well. So because of these elemental correspondences, we could also tie that into our blood magic as well. The power of fire, the power of our soul, the power of our spirit, and then also water, the power of our emotions, of our empathy, of our heart space, of our literal ancestry. Because the blood that is in your veins is pumping through you right now, is connected to all of these ancestors who have come before you. So when you are using your blood and magic, you are also using, in a sense, part of your ancestor's will that is pumping through your veins. There is no pulling that out of the blood. Blood magic is something that is just fundamentally controversial in the craft and something that I think is often shunned or not really researched or looked into much because of the controversy within the craft and also because of the stereotypes and misconceptions outside of the craft that are placed onto blood magic unjustly, in my opinion. Can blood magic become 
very unethical. Can it go into an unethical space? Yes, absolutely. And I'm not denying that. Can blood magic potentially put people in physical, real danger? Yes, absolutely. And I'm not denying that either. You know, improperly harvesting heart blood through not clean equipment or not clean areas or not cleaning the surface or forcefully taking it from another person. Obviously there are complications there. And obviously there are some things about that that I think a lot of us can agree come off as pretty unethical. But the purpose of this video is about education. And the purpose of this video is not to spread more misinformation about blood magic. I just want to get to the facts here. And that's what I am trying to present to you. Using it in blood divination, using it in spell work, using it in offerings. These are all valid, perfectly fine ways to use blood as long as you are doing so safely, right? You don't want to be putting yourself or someone else. Um, actually, I, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. To just make sure that you're being safe and clean about how you are harvesting the blood. Let's say that. That is what you want to make sure that you are doing. Whether you are using your own blood to help or harm, that is your business, that is your prerogative, and there will never be any judgment here on my channel for how you choose to use your own blood. Okay. Now some other sources to utilize blood magic, aside from heart blood, right? So if we're not going to be accessing our own blood from our veins is of course menstrual blood and menstrual blood is incredibly powerful and you can supplement heart blood for mostly everything that you can with menstrual blood in my opinion so if you would rather use your menstrual blood um that is totally valid i feel like menstrual blood is going to carry with a lot of these similar properties but then some because of its origin and how it is procured. I do feel like, in my opinion, using animal blood is also just as valid and fine. I'll tell you a story recently of a client who gifted me. I will tell you recently, I had a client who gifted me a goat's head. He's a butcher. And so he gifted me this and it was professionally packaged. And I had someone totally flip out who was with me and disgusted by it. And I think it's interesting how we as a society choose what animals are worth keeping and entertaining and taking care of as parts of our family and emotional ties and links and what animals we um, solely breed and nurture for consumption. I think that's interesting just from like a sociological kind of like perspective. I also think too, when it comes to animal sacrifice, and this might be where my video gets flagged or taken down. And this also might upset some of you guys watching this, but I think in terms of animal sacrifice, many people in the West aren't actually aware with what that actually means, animal sacrifice. I think a lot of people think someone just like grabbing a chicken or a cat and just abusing it and obliterating it and mutilating it and causing immense pain and suffering. Sometimes maybe that is what animal sacrifice might look like. But a lot of times what I have seen with animal sacrifice, it is something very religious and very sacred. And it is done very ethically and humanely. And in my opinion, if you go to McDonald's and go eat those chicken nuggets or McDoubles, or if you go to Arby's, what is their phrase? We have the meats. And you're consuming that and putting that in your body. You don't really, in my opinion, have a right to tell someone that a chicken that they've raised and taken care of they are not allowed to ritualistically kill and potentially consume because a lot of ritualistic animal sacrifices are also consumed. So it's not always necessarily like it's going to waste per se. And also let's not forget that animal sacrifices are very prevalent in the Bible and the Quran as well. This is not something new either. 
anyway, that's kind of my tidbit on that. And like I said, I'm sure that is where this video will get flagged or whatever. Blood and magic is something that should not be taken lightly. It is something incredibly powerful. Blood is one of, in my opinion, the most sacred and powerful resources we have as witches. And we have it with us always. Always we have this. It flows through our veins. It connects us to our ancestors. It heals, cleanses, protects, and nourishes us. And thus force connecting with that power, in my opinion, is something that is innately natural. It is something that can be used for malevolent or benevolent purposes as each witch wills. And that is their business, what they choose to do. So you can take all of the preaching all of the dogma and you can go shove it okay i wanted to hop back on here as i was editing this video i forgot to mention another major part of blood magic and that would be dedications not only can blood be used for spell work divination offerings feedings um but dedication as well dedicating part of your life your soul your chi your prana your energy to something and many of us clearly myself included, have already participated in a blood rite dedication um, in the form of tattooing. So if you have a tattoo in a way you have dedicated yourself via a blood rite, because a tattoo is a modern day blood sacrifice, if you think about it. Um, so I just kind of wanted to throw that in there as well, um, that that's another form of blood magic, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I'm actually going to be getting ready here soon after I finish editing this and heading over to my tattoo artist to get some more work done. So it's very fitting that I am filming this on this day. Anyways, I hope all of you are doing well. I hope all of you are surviving 2020 as we are getting into 2021. I am going to try to um, put something together for the New Year's. So definitely kind of look out for that. And until next time, blessed be. Mm -hmm.